Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. As you can see, we've been out this morning with the kids and the dog and got maybe a kilo or two of wonderful chestnuts from Sherwood Forest. Oh yes, look at the size of those little beauties. So today's vlog is really just half a day and what we're going to do is uh, finish off dry hopping the beer because that needs to come out this week. We're going to turn on the HLT for a brew day to start tomorrow and we're going to put some of the... Uh, chance going up those stairs. It's so funny. Aren't you buddy? Come on back down then. I oh, know I shouldn't do that really. He's mean. Are they ready? Chance, come on up. <laughs> oh, he's bum. So yeah, we're going to get the plum out of the freezer and we're going to drop the plum porter V1 on top of it. And V2, we're going to take a reading. As you can see up there, if we have a look at that plum porter, it is reading at the minute, the blue one is 1014 and the black one is 1015 the black one was the first one so v2 has dropped to about where we wanted it to be we wanted 1014 1015 and v1's got there as well but i suspect v1 will ferment again once it goes on the plums but v2 we're just going to cold crash we're going to get it off the yeast cake for next week and then we're going to use most of the volume in there to experiment with the flavoring and if we can get that right then we'll be moving forwards with brewing that beer on the big kit maybe for Christmas that would be nice so plums into there cold crash that one uh, dry hop the FVs for the second hit cool crash the ones that don't need the dry hop and then chase Abigail. <laughs> so this is the tub of plums that we had in the freezer. And there they are, all cut in half or into quarters and frozen. Plums, stalks, skins, pits and all. So what we're going to do is just let them... Uh, thaw out enough so I can get them out of the bucket and then I'm probably going to take another fermenter sanitize it drop these into the bottom of that other fermenter and then we'll siphon the plum porter into the other bucket uh, hopefully leaving behind most of the trub and then we'll put that back on the side and let these sit for a week and in that week I'm hoping that the other plum porter will have cold crashed by then and we can look at maybe bottling it with of course our Uncle Roy's plum essence fingers crossed folks so I think the plums I thawed enough to fall out, we'll see in a minute. But I know there was a reason why I was waiting. I was waiting for the brew assistant to turn up, look. He's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get the camera set up in the corner and uh, well, we'll siphon the plum porter V1, which is more like a plum bitter, because it's brown. We'll siphon that on top of the plums. Right, let's get the cam set up. That's probably not the best position. Let's take a wider, wider shot. There we go. So V1, yep. yeah, lid off and plummet inwards. Now, I'm hoping that they fall more acid in. out. Not now. Here we go. Shake your money, Mike. And we're in. We're in. And then, uh, I'm not going to bother with like a clothes transfer, but what I'll do is. Oh, can 
kind of not touch too much of that end. And we'll pop that in there like that. And then this end, yep. I can touch it all I like. Ooh, see them. Right, we've got that over the tip. There we go. So, maybe then, if I play the cards right, I might be able to just get the camera to have a peek at this while it's happening. And we'll open that up. We have some flowage. And there we go. And it's transferring, folks. Yes, indeed. So let's get in there and have a closer look. And you can see the plums being submerged by the bubbles. Ah, oh, there we go. So the colour doesn't look too bad there, but it is actually a lot browner than I wanted it to be. We'll see, Beersmith did have um, the colour of the plums at about 95 SRM. And I thought that was a mistake. But let's see what colour it comes out when yeah. it's done. You never know, it might change the colour yeah, of the might beer. Do. Might do. So at least, obviously you've got colour in the skins. Yeah. So uh, that, could, that could be picked up by the beer. Picked up by red wine, isn't it? So yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's where this plum comes from. So. It looks nice anyway, it, it looks a nice it. plum colour. Yeah. Right, well we'll let that transfer and then we might even have enough left in the tank for a sample. Ooh, sir. So this is a sample of V1 out of the tank and as you can see it's a lot paler than we intended it to be for a plum porter. In fact, it's definitely best bitter colour if you ask me. Now it smells like a porter. It's got a nice, got a nice note, to it. note to it. Yeah. Um, and it did finish out at 10, 14, 10, 15. So it dropped another four points, even though it was sat at about 11 degrees. It's got a bit of an alcohol nip to it. So the ABV is probably on the high side mm. for it. Mm. There's still a lot of residual sweetness in there, which I was hoping that the plums would take out because when the plums re-ferment, they're gonna uh, reduce the gravity of the beer because they're fruit and all the fructose will be fermentable. And I also thought there'll be some wild yeast and other microbes that will attack those dextrins that are unfermentable yeah. and bring them down yeah. as well. That was the idea. But I think that with a note of plum on it, it's almost plummy in it itself. Is, there's a little tone of licorice in there. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. So this Not is Not licorice as in the sweet, but as in licorice root. Yeah. The woody stalk that you can buy, that you can chew. So all, mainly all crystal 400 put the colour into this beer. So uh, on the version two, we've put in some black malt to try and give us that depth of colour that we, we're missing in this beer and also to take away a bit too much of that, that crystal malt sweetness. So I have more than half the crystal malt on V2. It's a nice little bitter edge to it, but it's only an edge. Yeah, it's Just not... very, very thin edge. It's definitely nice malt body. forward. Yeah. So on the um, research that I was doing for the porters that we've uh, sampled the other day, the plum porters, uh, everybody was suggesting that you go for a very low bitterness like uh, 0.5 uh, IBU to SG ratio and because the bitterness is the wrong it doesn't fit the, the beer style yeah. you want to be malt forward for yeah. this type of beer nice, otherwise nice you're going to have that bitterness fighting with the plum yeah. so that's why it does it doesn't really have any hop character to it at all no and that was not the intention because that's that would just fight and detract from the plum it would, i think it would mask the plum definitely but that i think that that's the winner that that's that's pretty good but i'm not happy with it because the color's out of spec you see so we'll see we'll see how it comes out with these yeah. plums 
and then for the second one, version 2, which we'll have a snifter of in a minute, because uh, that's fermented out, that's the one that's going to be hit with the essence. I like that. I could drink that. I could drink a fair amount of that, actually. It's got a bit of an Irish whiskey edge to it, I think. Do you know? I was, yes. You know yeah. what I mean? But peat, it's, not so much peaty, but it's, what's, it's pretty. That sweetness that it's you get. It's a little sweetness it. from, that you get from Irish whiskey. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I get that. It's just not got that alcohol kick that a spirit's got, but yeah. that's. Yeah, that's a that's a good um, good analogy. That definitely. Oh, we're looking good. Hmm. Right. So just turn my attention quickly back to the transfer. I'm just going to prop up the back with a trusty roller tape, which is what most people find to hand when they're doing something like this. <laughs> Just anything that you can reach into it yeah, last minute. Yeah. Oh shit, I need to prop the back up. That would be better actually. Prop. That's a bigger, bigger slice of the pie. There we go. So we're just catching the tail end of the transfer here. And we've got the bucket propped. And looking at, go on then, lift her up mate. See, the colour of that looks like a porter. It does, when definitely. It's full. But it's the volume, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the volume, volume deceiving. Maybe. Deceiving the eyes. So, yeah, we're about finished on the transfer now. And then all I'm <coughs> going to do is I'm going to lift the lid on this bucket and then swap buckets. And then we'll put the uh, lid on top of this. Even though it's covered in yeast and whatever, still, we know that that's sanitary because it's been sat in the beer from day one. Yeah. So that's uh, the plum porter in secondary with the plums on it. And this is a sample out the tank of V2. So come and get your gums around my plums, <laughs> matey. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. That's more of a porter colour, isn't it? Yeah, this is closer. It's still, you can see it's hazy slightly. Yeah. Because uh, it's, oh. it's got the yeast in suspension still. This is a oh, oh, oh. this is at 18 degrees still, so it's going to have it's going to taste a little bit different to the one that was it's chilled. It's got some nose on it. Oh, fruity or oh, what? Now almost oh, the same recipe. Let me just get it out to the side. Almost the same. Let's see if we can pick up what the difference is. Sweetness on that. So it smell that. Yeah, it should. I've kept the ratio between IBUs and SG the same. Yeah. So we've gone with uh, a small change in the pale malt quantity of about 500, 600 grams. Uh, but interestingly, because we've removed uh, the plum addition, then all of a sudden the percentage has changed massively yeah. because for some reason, and it's probably me setting it up wrong, uh, the plum went down as a grain addition, right. which gave 37% of the grain, yeah. which then gave a huge amount of color there as well. So it should have been in as almost as a hop, mm. and then it wouldn't have had an impact on the grain yeah. ratio yeah. or either on the colour ratio. So just we're going to have to look at the grams really to give us an idea of what's changed in the recipe and uh, apart from the pale malt coming down a touch and the wheat malt increasing a little bit maybe to give it a bit more head we've taken 200 grams off the crystal 400 yeah uh, we've taken that from 700 down to 500 ish and then we've added 500 grams of black patent malt to give it that darker colour. Yeah. And then everything else stayed the same, pretty much. So, what impact has removing that crystal malt and adding the black malt had to the beer? Definitely more of a, a familiar Guinnessy, uh, stouty, portery a note on the nose. Yeah, definitely. Giving it a smoky. Tastes slightly, yeah. Smoky, flavoured. 
It's definitely not roasty though. There's no coffee, no, no chocolate that I can pick up on it. No, it's more, it's definitely smoky. That's nice standalone, which is what I was hoping for because obviously by adding plum essence, well, if it's a bad beer, the plum essence ain't gonna improve it. No. I don't think so. Oh, it's got that uh, lingering astringent note at yeah. the back. That's what I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to work that which out. Which I didn't yeah. expect. I suppose that comes from the black malt. It must do. Oh, I suppose it could also come from the uh, from the crystal, but maybe it was masked by by the residual sweetness on the other one. Mm. This has got quite a lot of body to it, but I don't find it as claggy as the other one. It's it's light drinking. Yeah, it's light drinking. Definitely light drinking. And they've both. I mean, looking at the tilts, we can't see now because we've just taken one of them out. But they did have uh, almost the same final gravity yeah. of 1014, 1015. Yeah. And the ABV as well, I think, was about the same. It will be, won't it? Because there's only a difference in 100 or 2 grams in the malt bill. I think that'll take plum essence well, actually. There's one way to find out. Yeah, there is. Just put a drop put a in. Drop in. Shall we go for it? Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's move over to the Experiment laboratory. Experimentation. <laughs> right, we've got Uncle Roy out. He's ready to be not that, welcomed. Not that Uncle Roy we are. Welcome back to the family. No, he's not, he's not coming back to the family. I don't think he's out of prison yet. Right then, so these are virgin pipettes. Let's give it a couple of swirls. I can smell it already. A sniff on that. Oh my god, it's intense. That's strong. You know what? I think a drip, I do think a drip's going to be too much. I persuaded it off. That'll do. Right then. God, that's powerful. I think what we should do is get something to mix it and then maybe move away from the plum porter because that aroma is going to put us off I think. Right, the remnants of our sample with the smallest drop that we could persuade to leave the pipette into the beer. So let's go for a smell. Oh that's not too uh, unpleasant actually. It's subtle. I'd like to know how that would condition out, actually, with some CO2 on it to bring the aroma out. Wow, that is a lot of plum. Mm. I think that drop would have done half. Would have done half. We could have mixed, put one in one, mixed it yeah. together, and then split it again. It's plum bordering on. Uh, I'm not cherry because it hasn't got that sharpness. It's not all plum though, is what I'm trying to sweet say. Sweet cherry. There's a, a sweet cherry. There's another fruit hiding in there. It's not offensive though. No. I think it does need some time for the yep. flavours to kind of blend. Another 24 hours it'll blend properly. Yeah. And then... Well the plan is, when, when I take this out of the fermenter, I'm going to put it into bottle and I'm gonna dose each bottle separately. So we'll do, let's say, uh, one mil per liter, half a mil per liter, two mil per liter, two and a half mil per liter with the, uh, with the Uncle Roy's. And then we'll carbonate the bottles up to maybe just one and a half volumes of CO2. So there's just something there to lift it. Yeah. And the idea of priming the bottle as well means that we just give that yeast an extra kick to maybe mop up any oxygen that's uh, that's been introduced during during the flavouring process and the bottling process, and it'll just clean it up for us a touch, and then I think we'll have to come back to that in a week or two. This is pretty much ready to go into bottle, though, isn't it? I think. I think so, and it that's taken a lot of astringency away. Yeah, totally. It's dry at the back. That's not. I could. If that was given that. to me as a plum porter, I'd, I'd, I'd accept that as a plum porter. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's as good as the 
uh, the bottle samples that we had the other week. Yep. I wouldn't say any better, but definitely got the potential there. Hmm. You can tell I like it, I'm just drinking the Yeah. <laughs> right, well. I think that's a resounding success you imagine. Me too, yeah. So, uh, well that's probably going to be it for today's vlog then. I might wrap it up there because uh, I think that was quite a, a conclusive uh, insight into what we've got. And, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to add any more input to it, frankly. Uh, so we'll come back, uh, maybe on tomorrow's vlog, if you're so inclined. See you then.